Hello, and welcome to our pre-lab activity uh, for the epithelial tissues. And basically what we're going to be doing in the pre-labs is going through and talking about what the important concepts are to be looking at as you're reviewing the images within this course. So the first of these are going to be the epithelial tissues. And uh, the important concepts to keep in mind when you're talking about an epithelial tissue is that we're going to be looking at uh, a structure of tissue where the cells are going to be close together basically in contact with one another, and they're going to be forming sheets um, that line spaces within the body. And so when you start looking at uh, slides and start looking for epithelial tissues, you want to look for space. And so in this slide, uh, we've got uh, the outside world over here. We're looking at the surface of the skin. So we've got the outside space here uh, and the slide over here on the right. We've got a little bit of a duct system going on here, and so we can see a biological space within the body. And so epithelial tissues then are going to be lining spaces either outside of the body or inside of the body. And the major function associated with epithelial tissues is they're going to regulate the movement of materials across the compartment. So in essence, they're going to regulate the materials from the inside of the space through the epithelial lining to the connective tissue underlying it or to the body proper. And it may be something like the skin here, which is going to block the passage of materials. Or in a duct system, it may be involved with modifying materials as they're passing through the duct system, essentially modifying, pumping things across the epithelial lining. Now, when we have an epithelia, we're going to have an example of a polarized cell. We're going to have a distinct region at one end, which is different from the other end. And so, again, with an epithelia, we're going to have a basement membrane. If we're looking at it in light microscopy or a basal lamina, if we're looking at electron microscopy. And that's going to be kind of the base of the foundation of the epithelia. Below that, we're going to have connective tissue, but this is going to be the anchoring point, the base point for the epithelia. At the opposite end, we're going to have the apical region of the cell, and we may have some apical specializations here. In this case, uh, we've got um, some uh, probably microvilli up here because they're nice and regular and relatively short at this point. And so we're looking at an apical uh, specialization. Uh, lateral surfaces are going to be the sides of the cells, where the cells are going to be joining up with their neighboring cells. And remember in the lecture we talked about some uh, lateral specializations where we've got these cells essentially connecting up and making contact with their neighboring cells. Again, keep an eye that the epithelial tissues, the cells are going to be in close proximity and they need to remain in contact with one another. We take a look at the apical surface, we can see some specializations again uh, in this slide. Uh, we've got some microvilli across the surface here, uh, increase the surface area, and they've got actin cores. In the middle slide, we've got some cilia here, uh, slightly lower magnification. But again, finger-like projections coming off the apical end of the surface, but instead of an actin, essentially solid rod like we have in microvilli, we're going to have a microtubule core uh, here with the cilia. And in this case, what we've got is something that's going to be capable of movement, they're motile, and they're going to be able to, to beat and propel things along their surface. Over here, we've got stereocilia. Uh, stereocilia is essentially like a long microvilli, so it has uh, an actin core. And so it's not motile, it's not a true cilia, but it, it's going to refer to as a stereocilia. Now, when we start to classify the epithelia, we're going to have uh, two characteristics we're going to be looking at. The first characteristic is going to be the number of cell layers. And so over here, again, look for the biological space because we're looking at epithelial tissue. We've got a single cell layer thick. And so we've got the epithelia here, we've got the basement membrane, kind of at this point here, basement membrane at this point over here. So it's one cell layer thick, and we can tell that because we can take a look at the nuclei, and the nuclei are pretty much all lined up in a row. Okay. So one cell layer thick is a simple epithelia. In the middle here, we can see the nuclei lining up, and we've got the nuclei stacked on top of one another, and we can see the cell boundaries in some points. So we can see that these cells are stacked on top of one another. So if we have more than one cell thick, we're going to have a stratified epithelia. And then finally, over here, again, we're going to have the basement membrane kind of at this point, right through here, connective tissue below it, space up here to the top. We take a look at it, it looks like the nuclei are stacked, but in this case, what we've got is a pseudostratified epithelia. So it's only one cell thick because some of these cells are, are relatively short, they don't reach to the apical surface, and that gives it the appearance of a stacked nuclei, but it's a pseudostratified epithelia. So that's the first characteristic, the number of cell layers. The second characteristic to classify the epithelia is to look at the shape of the surface cell. So if they're flat, like we've got over here, they're going to be referred to as squamous. If they're cuboidal, kind of box-like, with the same height and width, uh, these cells are going to be cuboidal, like little cubes or boxes. 
The cells are taller than they are wide. They're going to look like little columns, and so they're going to be columnar. And then we're also going to have an example here where it's transitional. In this case, we've got surface cells uh, with rounded nuclei. Uh, we've got a stratified epithelia. But these cells can essentially respond by stretching and change their shape. So they're going to be transitional in shape. So you put the two characteristics together, so the number of cell layers thick and the shape of the surface cell, and it gives us our different classifications for epithelia. And so a simple squamous epithelia is like we've got right here. And we've got a top view on this one because I wanted to emphasize that what we're looking at are cells in close proximity to one another. And so we've got one cell layer thick, flat plate-like cells closely attached to one another, and we're looking down on top of it so we can see how these cells are making contact with their neighbors. Now, a simple squamous epithelium can be found in a number of locations in the body, but the classic locations are going to be lining the blood vessels, where we're going to have what's referred to as an endothelium, or lining body cavities, where we're going to have what's referred to as a mesothelium. Okay, so one cell layer thick, very flat, uh, scale-like cells, uh, so simple squamous epithelium. A simple cuboidal epithelium, again, look for the space up here at the top. We've got the uh, uh, basement membrane kind of at this point here, connective tissue underlying it. But we can see that we've got one cell layer thick, so it's a simple epithelium. We look at the nuclei, uh, look at the shapes of the cells. They're probably about the same height as they are wide, so we're going to say they're little bit cubes. And so this is going to be a simple cuboidal epithelium. And you can find a simple cuboidal epithelium um, in locations of body, like lining the ducts, uh, lining the kidney tubules. The next epithelia we'll look at, again, look for the biological space here. Uh, so we see these uh, cells in this place. So you've got the epithelial cells. We've got the nuclei lined up, so that's a good indication that we've got a single cell layer of cells. So we're looking at a simple epithelium. The cells are taller than they are wide, so they're going to be columns. So it's going to be a simple columnar epithelium. Basement membrane kind of at the point over here. Uh, probably got a lacteal over here. We'll talk about that later on in the course, uh, but it's as part of the lymphatic circulatory system. Um, so again, space, epithelial lining, connective tissue uh, underlying it, basement membrane at this point, kind of through here, simple columnar epithelia lining, say, the small intestines, the gallbladder, some of the kidney tubules, and some of the larger ducts. Then we've got the pseudostratified columnar epithelia. And so this was one, it's a little bit of a challenge to identify, but we take a look at it. The nuclei are kind of all stacked up on top of one another. Uh, we're going to know that it's falsely stratified because normally we're not going to see a stratified columnar epithelia uh, throughout the body. There's going to be rare locations uh, with some of the larger ducts, but they will only have generally two cell layers thick. In this case, we've got a whole mess of nuclei over here. Biological space, epithelial lining, basement membrane at this point over here, connective tissue in this region over here. And so what we're looking at then at this point is a pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Not all those cells, again, are going to reach the apical surface, but all of them are going to be sitting upon the basement membrane. We take a look at the surface. When we have a pseudostratified a columnar epithelia, we're often going to have apical modifications. The most common are going to be cilia along the surface. And that's going to be found within the respiratory tract. And again, the cilia are going to be able to beat and propel the mucus, which will be uh, secreted onto uh, the epithelial lining of, say, the trachea. We can also find uh, pseudostratified columnar epithelia within the ductus epididymis, within the male reproductive tract. And at that point, we'd see stereocilia, but they would be a much rarer and more irregular appearance than these cilia that we're seeing along this pseudostratified columnar epithelia at this point. Looking at the stratified uh, epithelia, uh, generally what we're going to be looking at is going to be a stratified squamous, so stratified many cell layers thick. Surface cells, we're going to have uh, the flat squamous cells, and we're going to have two categories of stratified squamous epithelia. The first are going to be minimally keratinized, and we're going to know they're minimally keratinized because we take a look at the surface cells, and we're going to find little nuclei that are going to be present here. So we essentially have living cells all the way to that apical surface. Many cell layers thick, surface cells have nuclei, so they're, they're alive, uh, but they're flattened. So we're going to be looking at a minimally keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. We're going to find this in regions of the body, lining moist cavities, which are subject to abrasion. So we see areas like the esophagus, the vagina, the anus, uh, the rectum, uh, as well as the eyelid, which can be lined by uh, this type of epithelium, minimally keratinized stratified squamous. Again, look for the biological space, see the epithelial lining, uh, basement membrane at this point in here, and then connective tissue underlying it. 
The alternative to the minimally keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is going to be the maximally keratinized stratified squamous. Again, we take a look at it, biological space here, epithelial lining, basement membrane at this point over here, connective tissue underlying this pinkish staining region, multiple nuclei, again indicating that we're looking at a stratified epithelia. We take a look at the surface cells, and these surface cells essentially are these, these fragments of cells, these uh, remnants of cells in essence. We don't see nuclei out here, and so that is going to be the indication that we're looking at a maximally keratinized epithelia because we're basically looking at enucleate or cells without nuclei that are in essence dead cells packed with keratin, and we're going to find this along the epidermis of the skin. Again, many cell layers thick, nice, very resistant cells packed with keratin along the surface, but in essence dead cells. Uh, and we'll talk about this in more detail when we talk about the skin as an organ. The transitional epithelia, again, we take a look at it. It's very obvious that we've got a stratified epithelia, but we take a look at the surface cells. These are rounder cells as opposed to when we have the minimally keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. We have very flat cells with flat nuclei. With the transitional epithelia, we have many cell layers thick, uh, rounded cells with rounded nuclei uh, along their surface. These cells are going to be capable of stretching, and so changing their shape or going through a transition in their shape. And so we're going to see these cells in areas like the urinary bladder and the ureter within the urinary system. And then the final thing we're going to talk about when we're looking at the epithelial cells are some specialized epithelial cells. And these are going to be epithelial cells that are specialized for the secretion materials. And so we can look at this as essentially gland-like structures, and we can look at glands as single cells or modifications where we've got a cluster of cells coming together to do some type of secretion. The simplest glands are going to be these goblet cells, and so we take a look at this. It's a unicellular gland, a gland composed of one cell. It's going to be a mucus-secreting gland and a mucus-secreting cell, so it's going to be relatively pale and hemotoxal and eosin. We're using the periodic acid shift stain. It may stain kind of purplish or magenta, but what we're looking at is kind of like the, the goblet of the glass up here. We're going to have the stem or the stalk of it kind of extending down here, and it extends all the way down here to the basement membrane. And so we've got a goblet cell here, another one towards the middle, another one kind of starting in at this point. You can find these goblet cells, these mucus secreting cells, inst among the epithelial cells of the small intestines and some types of respiratory epithelia, like that pseudostratified columnar epithelia uh, we talked about a few slides ago. The next type of secretory cells are going to be the serous cells, and these are going to be in clusters, secretory clusters, uh, in little gland-like regions. Uh, Serosecreting cells are going to be producing a watery proteinaceous solution, and so they're going to be secreting protein. So they're going to be basophilic with hematoxylin and eosin because they have that characteristic of basal basophilia. And so we take a look at it. We've got the, the space in here. Uh, we've got a space over here. Uh, we've got the lining cells in this area. Take a look at it. Round nucleus uh, here, kind of basic uh, basophilic staining kind of in this region here. Lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum often a lighter staining appearance towards the apex of the cell, closer to the lumen, because this is where the secretory uh, vesicles, the membrane bile vesicles holding the secretory product are going to be located. You can find serosecreting cells in a variety of locations within the body, but very commonly within the pancreas and the parotid salivary gland. And then the final type of cells we're going to be looking at are going to be the mucus secreting cells. So again, we've got a lumen here, so we've got a space at the inside of this secretory region, We've got the epithelial lining, got a very distinct basement membrane, kind of in the region here, connective tissue underlying it. But in this case, these are going to be releasing, these mucus secreting cells are going to be releasing sulfated and silated mucins. So they're going to be pale and hematoxylin eosin, purplish in the PAS stain, uh, lots of secretory product within their cytoplasm, and their nuclei are going to tend to be flattened uh, towards the base of the cell. So they're going to be doing the same type of thing as the, the goblet cells we took at look at uh, two slides ago but they're going to be essentially flattened out here because they're packed in with a bunch of other mucus secreting cells. If, again, find these in a variety of locations of the body, but a good starting point is to look at the sublingual salivary gland. And that finishes up our pre-lab activities for the epithelial system. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to go through the slides and be able to identify the structures and classify the different types of epithelia we've looked at. Thank you.